introduction train support system a trench is defined as an excavation when its length greatly exceeds its depth shallow trench are usually considered to be less than 6 meter depth deep and deep trenches greater than 6 meter depending on the dimensions of a trench excavation can either be carried out by hand or using a mechanical digger trenches are commonly required to allow services pipeline or foundation to be laid Water ingress into the trench is often a major issue and ground water table location and soil strata should be investigated before any extensive excavation takes place. Over a short period of time for relatively shallow depth, most soil type will stand almost vertically without any problems. However, Trenches other than those which are relatively shallow may require, require a trench support scheme. This is uh, the classification of excavation. Shallow excavation up to 1.5 meter, medium excavation 1.5 meter to 3 meter, deep excavation over 3 meter. There are four types of trench, which is batterin vertical cut trench, benching, benching and battering. Firstly, batter trench. Usually cheap and quick to excavate in upper ground. Appropriate equipment can be used in batter trench prim primarily to protect personnel. Such protection would be particularly useful where the safe temporary slope of the ground is difficult to determine or is unusual shallow. The ground may become unsafe if any delay occur. If any delay occur, the slope employed is generally stable, but there are odd pockets of less stable ground. This is the diagram of battering trench. The size of exca the excavation is slope at the angle of repose so that the site are self-supporting. This method requires a lot, a lot more material to, to be excavated, however, no shoring is required. This is angle of repose diagram. The definition angle of repose is the steepest angle at which a sloping surface form of loose material is stable. Next is vertical cut trench, where the overall working space is restricted, particularly in urban areas, the trench faces will usually have to be vertical. The effect of the construction regulation is to require the trench over 1.2 meter in depth to be supported unless the trench is in stable ground, up to 1.5 depth. This is the diagram for vertical cut trench. Next is benching trench. The excavation is cut in a series of steps. Each step should not be deeper than 1.5 meter and it should be set back enough so that if the top level was to collapse, it will not fall into the bottom of the trench. This method requires a lot more material to be excavated, however, no shoring is required. This is the benching trench diagram. So, this is the steps and this is the setback. Lastly, is the benching and bentering. Benching and bentering, which is a combination of the above methods. Traditional trench support system Planking and strutting was originally the accepted method of the trench shoring. Close boarding for application in running soil and generally poor ground. Less planking may be possible in more stable condition. We make them safe for us to enter them. So here in Australia, the deepest trench that we can get into to do any work is 1.5 meters deep 
and on the average person, who's about 1.8 metres tall, it comes up to about there. Now, one of the reasons for that is uh, there's a thing called compressive asphyxiation, where if you get too much weight on your chest, you can basically suffocate. So if you were to get a trench collapse, then with the 1.5 metre depth, you're not going to get too much material up around your chest. And this all, of course, assumes that you're standing up at the time that the trench collapses. But anyway, that's the depth, 1.5 metres. So what happens if you are required to get into a trench that's deeper than 1.5 metres? What can we do? Well, there's a couple of different methods we can use. The first one is called benching. And basically what it is, is stepping the trench in maximum 1.5 metre steps uh, and making sure that this side is back far enough that if it was to collapse it wouldn't subsequently fall into the trench, it would stay on this step. So that's called benching, or some people call it stepping, but it's commonly referred to as, as benching. Problem with this, as you can see, a lot of excavation required, a lot of material needs to be removed just to get a fairly small trench, so you know, not very commonly used. The other method is called battering. All right, again, a lot of excavation. This angle that these are cut at should be the angle of repose, and I have another video explaining what that means. But again, lots of excavation, so not not too commonly used and of course there's a combination of the two so we've got a a bench here and then a batter on the side again angle of repose so not a lot of over excavation but still still a lot of excavation for a, a fairly small trench but these are possible methods okay if you've got all the time in the world to dig the hole then yeah no problems the other way we can do it is... G'day and welcome back to Biltum. And in this video I want to talk about something called the angle of repose and the resulting zone of influence that we talk about in regards to excavation. So all material has an angle of repose and it's different for each different type of material depending on what it is and how the particles of the material are made up. So just think about a load of sand that you get out of a truck. When it arrives on site and it's all shaken out of the truck, it sort of sits up like that naturally. Um, and that basically is the angle of repose, or you know, I think of it more of the angle of rest. So it's the angle that the material will naturally support itself at. Okay, now obviously with sand... Um, you'll see the heaps over time, they flatten out, but that sort of angle is the angle of repose because the particles are holding themselves there um, and you know, they are self-supporting, if you like, at that angle. Obviously, over time, people jumping on them, a bit of rain, a bit of wind, they'll flatten out, but that's you, know, you don't normally get that sort of influence when they're in the ground. So, you know, that's just what happens because of wind and people. So we've got our angle of repose. So if you take that to a excavation type set out, here's our trench. And again, depending on the type of material, uh, we're going to have the angle of repose for our material. So anything on this side or this side of our angle of repose, that's going to be basically self-supporting. So we don't have to worry too much about that falling into our trench. This part here, and this part here, is called our zone of influence. So this stuff is not self-supporting, and it has the chance, once the trench has been dug, to fall into the trench. Now, it could be influenced by lots of things, uh, water, people walking or machines driving on, in the zone. And if we go up at the top and have a look, so you can sort of see that anything that was to enter this zone could influence the material and cause it to fall into the trench. Okay, so when we're digging holes, we need to think about what we do around the edge of our trench and how big this zone of influence is. So there we go. 
angle of repose, it's different for each material or angle of rest and what's not inside the angle of repose is in the zone of influence and it could be influenced to fall or collapse into our excavation. Assalamualaikum. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, tell you about uh, my topic. My topic is a factor affecting the method of excavation and timbering. Okay, first, uh, there uh, have uh, seven factor affecting. Okay, first of all is nature of the subsoil. Nature of the subsoil to determine uh, plants or tools require an amount of timbering needed. Second is purpose of excavation. Meanwhile, minimum width, minimum depth, and placing of support members to provide reasonable working space within excavation. And third, prison of groundwater, which need interlocking, timbering, some pits and pumps, or dewatering. Okay, then uh, continue with uh, number four is position, location of excavation. Okay, the factor affecting is restriction of police requirement, especially when excavating in public road. This is using number four is uh, position of excavation is uh, when excavate at public road. Okay, the number five is non availability non availability of the right type of plan. So we must choose the best one to uh, excavate and timbering. Okay, so number six is presence of large number of service which restrict to use of machinery. The large number of service is uh, we must uh, make sure that uh, all the services is uh, used uh, wisely and still on the budget okay so then uh, we must uh, take uh, serious about uh, to select uh, the excavation uh, service okay so then uh, the last one is disposal of excavated spoil may restrict the choice of plan so uh, disposal of excavate uh, will be uh, uh, we can uh, we need to avoid because uh, it will restrict the choice of plan so we must choose uh, properly uh, about uh, how to excavate and timbering okay so we can uh, look at here uh, the spoil or stack material pipes brick so uh, this is uh, after excavate, excavating okay so uh, the okay so uh, this is uh, the look of uh, process of excavate. Uh, this is uh, a column that we, uh, we put at the ground uh, to uh, make sure the base uh, of the building uh, is good to continue the construction. Okay, so uh, there's a three uh, method of timbering. First one is pinchers. Okay, so pinches is uh, only suitable in stable ground and can space up to 1.8 meter in shallow excavation. Okay, then uh, number two is open boarding. Open boarding is suitable in moderately firm ground. When erect with half sheeting, the method is commonly known as hit and miss. Okay, the last one is close boarding. Suitable in soft or loose ground, trench has to be excavated in stage. So, uh, from the method of timbering, we can uh, choose uh, the suitable one uh, depends on our uh, ground and it depends on our uh, working place and uh, we can choose uh, uh, we can choose uh, firstly we can choose pinches second open boarding or close boarding so choose the right one uh, to make sure our job is uh, easy to run. Okay, so this that's all about uh, method of timbering and factor effecting to choose uh, excavating and timbering. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Uh, today I want to tell you about property trench support system. There are three: the hydraulically structured shore and walling shield and boxes and plate and linear system then in the hydraulic structured shore and oiling uh, 
and walling, I have three vertical shore, waller unit, and manhole brace. Okay, first I want to tell you about hydraulic started shore and walling. The, the uh, advantage about this installation uh, and removal can carry out by one or another one or two workmen giving greater value in speed of operation installation and removal are uh, carried out over ground level action safety this is because uh, we use hydraulic because uh, hydraulic can easily pump out the, the this thing that is vertical shore section eh? uh, so that it can um, give a greater gap to hold the column okay the next one is hydraulically started shore and volume again and this is vertical shore you can see it is vertical okay and this is a uh, waller unit waller unit is uh, basically we know as horizontal and this is manhole brace okay waller unit used in the ground condition that requires sheeting center thrust can be released temporary and swung aside to allow greater access in situation that are excavation in capable to stand for the short period stretching, tempering and uh, are carried out in section of length of the waller unit. In poor ground condition, runner is necessary to provide continuous support through the stage of excavation. Okay, this is a uh, waller unit basically you can use in poor ground condition. So it's the best we to use it aside if the the ground is poor condition such as clay or have a slope. Okay. Uh, the one is hydraulically started show and walling for manhole brace. Okay. It's designed to support rectangular or square excavation. Provide clay working space in no obs uh, obstructing brace on last um, frame single cross bracing may needed accommodate loading we can see uh, they all use hydro uh, hydraulic this is hydraulic to pump uh, out the pressure okay. Okay. and then is a uh, shield and boxes uh, shield and boxes consists of two uh, side of rectangular structure placed in trench of provide uh, to provide safe working environment and we can see that it's more modern than another tree for hydroplane structure and oiling. And it's safe to use, easy to use and robust uh, in, as known as it has a thick plate to cover the ground uh, and also known as drag, uh, drag boxes and shadow. Designed as safety device against collapse without an attempt to support the trench aside. Shield or boxes are pushed into the ground and excavated deep out the loose, uh, loose soil between the plate. And this is uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this type can, uh, is very good in a poor soil. And then the waller unit. Okay, plate leaning system. Plate leaning system consists of rectangular plate support with adjusted thrust at each end. Plate are slot into vertical hitch section, strut guide rail, available in wide variety of unit size of 5 meter long and 2.5 meter high. Slide rail and panel are pushed into the ground as soil is excavated between the panel, and we can see there are and this like a wall for excavate excavate thing. Okay, safety. Okay, safety. Trends should be examined at least one a day if person are employed. Train after an expected fall or rock of rock, earth or material after explosion charge have been fired within the preceding seven days. This safety to show that 
this uh, this wall and uh, this wall can hold the ground strong. Okay, that's all for, for today. Thank you. Underpinning. Underpinning is a method for repair and strengthening of building foundation. The method of underpinning helps to strengthen the foundation of an existing building or any other infrastructure. This involves installation of permanent or temporary support to an already held foundation, so that additional depth and bearing capacity is achieved. The process of underpinning may be required. 1. To support the structure which is sinking or tilting due to ground failure. 2. As a safeguard against possible settlement of a structure when excavating close to or below its foundation level. 3. To enable the foundation to be dependent for structural reason, for example, construction of new basement. 4. To increase load carrying capabilities of foundation, for example, construction of new story. Selection of underpinning methods. First, conversion works. The structure has to be converted to another function which requires stronger foundation compared to existing. 2. Protection works. The following problem of a building has to undergo protection works. The existing foundation is not strong or stable. Nearby excavation will affect the soil that support existing footing. Stabilization of the foundation soil to resist against natural calamities. Requirement of basement below an already existing structure. 3. Remedial works. Mistakes in initial foundation design cause subsidence of the structure. Work on present structure, then building a new one. Structural condition which requires underpinning. The first condition, the degradation of timber pile used as a foundation for normal building will cause settlement. This degradation of structures is due to water table fluctuation. 2. Rise and lowering of the water table can cause decrease of bearing capacity of soil making the structure to settle. 3. The structure that are built over soil with a bearing capacity not suitable for the structure will cause settlement. Method of underpinning. The choice of method will depend largely on first, type of underpinning required, two, the depth of foundation required, three, the access available. The first method of underpinning is a mass concrete underpinning method or pit method. The method involves extending the old foundation till it reaches a stable stratum. The soil below the existing foundation is excavated in a controlled manner through stages or pins. When strata suitable is reached, the excavation is filled with concrete and keep for curing before next excavation. In order to transfer the load from old foundation to new one, a new pin is provided by means of basing dry sand cement pack. This method suitable for the shallow foundation. This is the figure for pit method. From the figure, at the bottom is the mass concrete which will Later, all the load from the building. So the number two method is the pile method, applicable when suitable subsoil bearing capacity is too depth, making traditional wall underpinning not economical. Advantages is noiseless, vibrationless, flexibility in length. Process: Concrete piles are pushed on the both sides of the wall. The needle beams are then used over the piles through the wall where the needle beams act as a pile cap. This alleviates the load from the wall. This strategy is helpful for waterlogged soil where walls convey heavy loads. In this situation, piles and needle beams turn into a perpetual part of the establishment and existing foundation of the wall are not disturbed. So, this is a figure for the pile method. So, at the right and the left is the concrete pile which uh, cater the load from the existing wall to replace the existing foundation. So the third method is fire and beam underpinning method. This method progress because the mass concrete method couldn't work well for a huge depth of foundation. It is found feasible for most of the ground condition. Shear reinforced concrete beams are placed to transfer the load to mass concrete vessel or fire. The size and depth of the beam are based on the ground condition and apply load. It found economical for depth shallower than 6 meter. So, this is the figure. There is a two alternative. Alternative one, beam formed in the place of existing footing. 
and alternative 2 being formed above existing footing. The fault method is minimal method. This method can be implemented where the loads from the foundation have to transfer to strata located at a distance greater than 5 meter. This method is adaptable for soil that have variable nature, access is restrictive and causes environmental pollution problems. The process first boring small diameter of 70 mm to 300 mm first using air or water flash. Reforcement, single bars or cages are positioned. Hole is then grouted with cement grout which is stable to resist displacement and erosion of the injection. The selection of drilling machine depends on the meter of hose required, grip of drilling, depth of drilling, and maneuverability. The advantages of mini piles method to no excavation or shore is needed. The equilibrium of the building is maintained during the operation. Construction such as existing foundation can be easily overcome. Minimum vibration, ground disturbance, and noise capable to operate in awkward and restricted access condition. This is uh, the example of mini pile method, bridge piers and abutment. Mini piles may be installed through existing bridge piers and abutments with the minimum of vibration, thus achieving a direct positive connection between piles and structure. So second example, underpinning buildings, mini piles used in conjunction conjunction with needle beams to support comparatively lightly loaded structure. Pass spacing will be dependent upon the strength of the existing structures. Hello, I'm Richard Brooks from Damp to Dry Construction Limited based in Nottingham and Derby. This short video is to show the basic method we use to complete the repair of subsidence and structural failure. First we excavate the ground along the side and below the damaged foundation in approximately 1 meter increments at a time, as in the diagram. This leaves the structure supported. We then pour in concrete below the foundation to in effect form a brand new foundation. Then we backfill these in 1 meter sections and excavate and repeat the process to more 1 meter increments as on the diagram until the underpinning is complete. This leaves the structure sound and safe and no movement can now occur. Thanks, Richard Brooks, Damp to Dry Construction Limited. The ground below the foundation is dug out. A tunnel is excavated and workers pass under. The underpinning steel pipe pile press fit technique uses a hydraulic jack and press fits a steel pipe to firm ground inside the tunnel and raises the building through this counter force. After this, this process is performed in multiple locations until the building becomes level. Features 1. There is no need to live in a temporary residence during construction. 2. This technique can be applied to both mat foundations and continuous footing. 3. The risk of repeat subsidence is reduced because this technique uses the counterforce of the hard ground.